la cour. I declare open the hearing for the delivery of a judgment of the European Court of Human Rights in the case of Yuxul Yalchinkaya against Turkey pursuant to Article 44 of the Convention and Rule 77, Paragraph 2 of the Rules of Court. The agent of the government and the representatives of the applicant have been duly informed of the date and time of the hearing, and I welcome the representatives of the parties present here today in the name of the court. The application was lodged at the court on the 17th of March 2020 under Article 34 of the Convention. It was allocated to the second section of the court. A chamber of seven judges was constituted within that section. Leave to intervene in the written proceedings was granted to the International Commission of Jurists. On the 3rd of May 2022, jurisdiction was relinquished to the Grand Chamber, and a hearing on the merits took place on the 18th of January 2023. The Grand Chamber adopted its decision on its judgment on the 28th of June 2023. I shall give a brief summary of the facts and read out the operative provisions of the judgment. The summary of the facts is not part of the judgment and will not bind the court. For a more detailed explanation of the facts and a summary of the court's reasoning, I refer you to the press release, which will be available at the conclusion of this hearing. The full text of the judgment will also be available and may be consulted on the court's internet site. The case concerns the trial and conviction of the applicant for membership of an armed terrorist organization, which was described by the Turkish authorities as the FETO PDY, and which was considered to be behind the attempted coup d'etat of the 15th of July 2016. The applicant's conviction was based decisively on his use of the encrypted messaging application, BILOC, which the domestic courts held was designed for the exclusive use of FETO PDY members, his use of a bank account and his membership of a trade union and an association that were considered to be affiliated with the FETO PDY were also relied on as corroborating evidence. I will now read the operative part of the judgment. The court, one, declares unanimously the complaint under Article 7 of the Convention, the complaint under Article 6.1 of the Convention, as concerns the rights of the defence in respect of the evidence underlying the conviction, and the complaint under Article 11 of the Convention admissible. Two, holds by 11 votes to six that there has been a violation of Article 7 of the Convention. Three, holds by 16 votes to one that there has been a violation of Article 6, Paragraph 1 of the Convention. Four, holds unanimously that there has been a violation of Article 11 of the Convention. Five, holds by 16 votes to one that there is no need to examine the admissibility and merits of the remaining complaints under Article 6 of the Convention and the complaint under Article 8 of the Convention. Six, holds by 10 votes to 7 that the finding of a violation constitutes in itself sufficient just satisfaction for any non-pecuniary damage sustained by the applicant. 7. Holds by 14 votes to 3. A. That the respondent state is to pay the applicant within three months 15,000 euros plus any tax that may be chargeable to the applicant in respect of costs and expenses to be converted into the currency of the respondent state at the rate applicable at the date of settlement. B, that from the expiry of the above mentioned three months until settlement, simple interest shall be payable on the above amount at a rate equal to the marginal lending rate of the European Central Bank during the default period plus three percentage points. Eight, dismisses by 10 votes to seven the remainder of the applicant's claim for just satisfaction. This concludes this afternoon's hearing, and I accordingly declare it closed.